ओम श्री साई राम वेलकम टू प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर इन द लाइफ ऑफ स्वामी बॉयहुड ओपन इन ओरवकोंड वेर ही स्टडीड फॉर सम टाइम admiration and speculation heralded his entry into the town suddenly agog with stories of the wonder boy he was only a boy then but at the coming year what to reveal that raju would behave in a manner much beyond his age and we also will come to know how respectful he was to his elder brother sesham raju it is quite funny enough to know that his parents wanted him to be a normal child an intelligent boy to study in the school come up in life and that he would become one day an officer with a responsible position but the design of avatar is quite different known best to him only he did not ultimately complete his studies but left it midway in order to embark on his spiritual mission and here in orokonda he spent relatively very short period of stay but here the glory of avatar cannot be hidden for a long time it unfolds from time to time the fame of raju as an unusual student with mysterious powers had preceded him from puttaparthi to kamalapuram and to bukkapatnam even the school at oravakonda something like a perfume that reaches to distances something like sandal the fragrance of which could be felt from long distance swami's fame has already been there before he stepped into that oravakonda oravakonda where he studied derives its name from a huge boulder 100 feet high and shaped like a many hooded snake orava means snake konda means hill as has been said here the admiration and speculation heralded earlier as i pointed out he was highly respectful towards his brother so much that he would not even look up while speaking to him unlike the present day is enough if you don't pull their collar talking to them recklessly in an irresponsible way but he was very humble affectionate quite obedient to his brother and so his period of study was quite short there rokonda is full of uh, wells so many places and so many temples it is rather painful to note that raju had to draw water for the family needs from the wells of a uh, old oravakonda is so difficult to fetch water all along all these things are very well known to his parents just with a desire to educate him they permitted him to go to oravakonda parents left him there and returned to puttaparthi and of course with brother sesham raju 
along with Rasu, his sister, Venkama, also stayed there in their residence. At all the residences in those days, of course, even today, the poorer sections of the people will have such kind of accommodation. All rooms look, look like a railway train bogies, very close to each other. Baba recalls his golden days and says this way. These are all the public statements given by Baba, my friends. Due to carrying water on my shoulders in big pots tied with the ropes on either side of a bamboo stick, my shoulders became very hard. In spite of my doing such hard work, my aunt, my sister-in-law, used to beat me without any reason. Without any reason. Now imagine what kind of torture that he underwent. Further, he had said, Baba says, they never give me food on time. Once Raju's sister, sister-in-law, meaning Seshama Raju's wife, slapped Raju so hard that his cheek became swollen, swollen. The hardship of carrying water had a telling effect on Raju. He was to remember the experience in later years when, as Sai Baba, he had masterminded the Sri Satcha Sai Safe Drinking Water Project for various districts of Andhra Pradesh. He experienced and expressed his divinity by introducing successfully, completing victoriously such as a drinking water project. By leaving this place for Uravakonda, Raju took leave from his friends. One of his friends expressed his concern. The friend said, when will I be back? When will we meet again and talk together? Then the friend said, you want education, we want cultivation. Your brother has written, you go and study. That was the bond of love between him and his friends. They could not be away from him, nor Swami prepared to leave them either. It is at this stage, after a couple of days, a disquieting letter was received at Puttaparthi. It is Satya, the father said to his wife, but it is nothing serious, only a scorpion sting perhaps. They could find no scorpion. It happened three days ago at dusk. And listen. Shashamara writes that Satya was in deep sleep for a whole day after, but he had no pain. Israma was scared. After a sting of that nature, one is forcibly kept awake, forcefully kept awake for fear that sleep would heighten the effect of the poison. That's what uh, his parents came to know. But if brother is fully aware the stings were often fatal, therefore he prepared to leave at once. Before he departed, however, another message arrived with a second letter. This letter stated that Razu recovered consciousness and was in a bad shape. He would not eat or drink and seemed unaware of what was happening around him. He seemed to be somewhere else, conversing with invisible beings. Isharama could not bear to hear more. She begged her husband to take her along, and she muttered desperate prayers all the way. She asked for one boon, that Satya be normal. She no longer wanted him to be unique or even more intelligent than the rest. None had the balm 
that could harm her. They applied all sorts of remedial measures, including the milk of a medicinal plant known to have healing properties. And they also sought the help of astrologers, priests, palmists, allopaths, homeopaths, naturopaths, and even district medical officers, but to no avail. Razu was unperturbed. What happened in Oravakonda? It is only the scorpion bite. On Shivaratri day, after dinner, Satyam came up to Venkama and said that he wanted to go somewhere and that he would return after some time. And he asked her not to bolt the front door. But what happened? As said, Sachin did not return on time. Just at the time of very early morning, his sister felt a touch on her hand. When she opened her eyes, she saw Sachin there in uh, the front door. He had just arrived. When he asked him where he had been all night, he softly asked her not to speak, lest their brother and sister-in-law come to know of his late arrival. He said that he had gone to perform Abhishekam to Lord Shiva. I have brought prasadam, he said. So, his concern, his activity, was totally spiritual. It may appear a kind of indiscipline for leaving the house without anyone's notice. But where did he go? For Abhishekam, worshipping Lord Shiva with sacred water. Activity was full of spirituality. He did not speak out anything of this. But when he was recovering from the shop, during that period of convalescence, his sister Venkama attended on him. But he always said, no, nothing is needed for me. But one day he went into the bathroom and shouted, Abba, Abba, meaning a sigh, an expression of terrific pain. And then she inquired, she said it was a scorpion that had stung. With the help of a lantern light, they could not find the scorpion anywhere nearby. When Kama was mortally afraid, as she had heard that it was fatal in Uravakunda to be stung by a scorpion, when she has asked Satyam whether it was painful and burning, he replied in the negative and asked her to go to sleep. Next day, great change was noticed in such a face. So many changes thereafter. They all have some messages to convey and for us to learn certain things about the unfoldment of Avatar. Sairam will meet in the next session.